February 5th, John Calvin. Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. Born into a devout Catholic family, Calvin was sent off to study philosophy and law. By the time he was 24, he embraced Protestantism and worked for changes in the Roman Catholic Church. He wrote The Institutes of the Christian Religion, a foundation of Protestant systematic theology, and he wrote commentaries on every book in the New Testament except the Revelation and on most books of the Old Testament. He was thoroughly convinced of the majestic sovereignty of God. Some people have said that Calvin was cold, unapproachable, unemotional, and reluctant to speak. But those who knew him well understood that facade shielded a man who felt deeply and was especially anxious about the state of the world and of men's souls. Calvin himself said, There is not one blade of grass, there is no color in this world that is not intended to make us rejoice. Our physical weaknesses never have to limit our spiritual strength. Calvin's body was failing him. It had been for a long while now. Even on his best youthful days, Calvin had always leaned toward the frail side. Now, as an older gentleman closer to the sunset of his life rather than the sunrise, just getting out of bed proved difficult. Migraines, lung hemorrhages, gout, and kidney stones had rendered Calvin's physical condition bleak at best. But his mind was as strong as ever. Calvin had been working his way through the entire Bible. He was writing a commentary on nearly every book. When he was no longer able to write, he finished many of these by dictating to his assistants. Ministers throughout the city would come and visit with him with the intent of encouraging the dying leader but often they were the ones who left inspired. When his body provided enough strength to sit up and go out, Calvin went to church in a chair, carried by friends and students. But he wasn't there to sit in the service. He was there to lead. His assistants would place Calvin in his chair behind the pulpit, where he would preach and even conduct baptisms. His faith and determination willed his body into work. In a sense, Calvin identified with the words of the prophet Jeremiah found in chapter 20, verse 9. But if I say I will not remember him or speak any more his name, there in my heart it becomes like a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary of holding it in, and I cannot endure it. His soon-to-be successor, Theodore Beza, said it is true that not only ministers, but friends too, urged him not to wear himself out by coming and working like this, but he would make excuses and say that it did him good and that time would hang too heavily on his hands if he stayed indoors all the time. When he was unable to go to church, he would bring church to himself. Some days, Calvin's bedroom filled to capacity while he lay in bed and read from the Bible in his notes. Even when it was clear that this simple act of reading aloud was deteriorating his condition, no one dared stop him. He was a man on a mission. On occasion, friends would voice their worries about the daily regimen's effect on his health. But his response was always, what, would you have the Lord find me idle when he comes? John Calvin understood the Apostle Paul's statement in 2 Corinthians 12, 10. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. How can you use your weakness today to reveal his strength? Our physical weaknesses never have to limit our spiritual strength. Hey guys, I'm Daniel Carpenter. I'm one of the narrators for 365 Christian Men. Today is February 5th and you just heard a story about John Calvin. You know, sickness and adversity are common to all men. They test our faith and our endurance. And they also reveal the shortcomings and the innermost desires of our heart. They even reveal the strength of our character. 
And you know, I'm confident that someone listening to this message today is enduring some form of sickness or adversity. And so I have a question for those of you who are in, enduring some form of sickness or adversity. What is your pain revealing about you? Is your pain drawing you nearer to God and increasing your faith in Jesus? Or is it driving you away from God and diminishing your faith and your joy? You know, James chapter one, verse two says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. You see, trials like sickness and adversity, they are actually opportunities for us to experience joy. Why? Because they are producing something within us. They test and strengthen our faith, which in turn produces endurance and steadfastness. So for those of you who are suffering, my challenge for you today is to reframe your thinking so that like Calvin, you can see your challenges as opportunities for joy and for growing in Christ likeness. My prayer for you is that God will work through your pain in order to produce a greater love and joy in your heart.